Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of The Complete Herbal Guide. And today I have a very special guest with me, and I'm very excited to introduce you to her. Her name is M Mira Shah, and she is a transformation coach, and she has a lot of great information to help people transform themselves inwardly and outwardly. And today she's here to show you how you can actually transform your life and lead a more healthier, happier life with things that she's developed to help people, tools, techniques, and other ideas and tips that she wants to share with us today. So Mira, introduce yourself. Tell us a little about yourself and what you do. I will do. Thank you, Stacey. First of all, let me just say I'm so excited to be here. I'm all the way from London, the other side of the great pond, as they call it. <laughs> so it's really exciting for me to be, um, you know, speaking um in the u.s from the other side of the pond although i know your podcast is global so i uh, just it, it's really exciting and i love talking about this subject so thank you for having me on um, oh, very i welcome. love it it's my mission in life to just to help people up level themselves because i've done it for myself and i think um that I, I do workshop speaking, I do one-to-one -one clients, I work with corporate schools, so I work with a variety of people, but it's always about developing strength, resiliency, the best version of you, and I really hate the whole fake it till you make it. I'm much more a believer in actually your habits can create your strength. And you know what? I want to share something there just very quickly is the idea that somebody says you cannot be that which you are not. Yes. Sorry, yes. Pete, you cannot be that which you are not. And what this means for those of you who might be wondering, what on earth does that mean? It's simply we all have a certain frequency and a vibe. So I can tell you anything, but actually we're feeling beings and we feel our way into what somebody's saying. Are they at the right frequency of what they're saying and are they telling the truth? We feel each other even before we say anything. Right. So if it's like that, of that is of course other people feel us before we say things. Mm -hmm. So really, it's far better to be that person you want to be than, you know, um, fake it till you make it kind of strategy. Now, when you started your career, you were in a totally different occupation and you drew a passion to you to this. Now, you were what you um, what, were, what were you before you became a transformation coach? You were a so my background is finance. I come from a banking um, corporate finance background. I think it had its place in life. And uh, when I started out, you know, it was a really in thing to do and I really enjoyed my early years of my career but you know as I grew older um, and life happened <laughs> in various ways um, I think I just outgrew that career I didn't like the environment um, banking typically is filled with a lot of at the time it's getting better but a lot of male a lot of narcissists um, you know, more heart, more head driven than heart driven. And right. I knew always I was more spiritual, more heart driven. And I think I just outgrew that career and I just got into more personal development, the meaning of life um, and working heart and head in conjunction, really. So really what you did was your true passion, what you really, what really drove you in life was, was already inside you. It was just realize and come to a realization that, hey, this area of career isn't making me happy. This, there's more for me out there. And then as time went on, you kind of figured out what your true passion is in life. And then you went forward and you said that you created things to help you transform your life and then you use those things to help teach others now how did you transform your life what type of transformation did you have like how did it all begin yeah I, I remember the first thing that kind of triggered it all for me and this shows the environment I was in I was so head driven I think just it's not naturally who I am, but, you know, you become the environment you're in often. Yes. So I remember one time there was a decision I had to make. And one of my friends who's completely creative and heartless said to me, what does your intuition tell you? And I was a bit like, oh, I don't know, because I was doing the whole pros and cons thing with my head about yes. making this in it. And she goes, but what, what does your gut instinct tell you? And do you know what? 
I just stopped. I said, I don't know. I can't feel my gut instinct. I don't know. I'm so in the right and wrong and the pros and cons and the list. And it really, she was completely shocked. And I was completely shocked that she makes decision in the end with her gut instinct. And then it occurred to me that I had a whole missing thing inside that I wasn't right. trusting yeah. and that was kind of that really I'll never forget that moment it was a small moment for her but it was a big shocker for me like yeah oh there's this whole thing missing and this is how people live I live by right and wrong not how I feel or what feels good all of those things I just never even understood so that triggered off a bucket full of tears and weeps because I think when you finally find some part of you's missing and your heart's been missing and what feels good missing it just I think I cried for about two or three days yeah really I was really sad and it you know I realized I was missing in my own life um my soul my spirit heart whatever term resonates for you right so then I ended up going down a lot of personal development things so I did all the you know the motivational speakers I did um the famous Tony Robbins Deepak Chopra and then over the years I got more and more spiritual so I've done the Louise Hayes um Marianne Williamson's if any of those name ring a bell but I've done both I've done the whole mindset which is more the you know the Tonys and that kind of peak performance stuff but then I just got driven down a spiritual path I think how I got on the spiritual path was I was doing all these strategies and I felt a whole lot better with my mind and my body but I think I experienced depression and then I knew something else was calling. And, you know, they call it the dark night of the soul. Yeah. Um, a lot of people will have experienced it. And in fact, sadly, they say, you know, a lot of people suffer from mild level depression anyway. Mm-hmm. Just that, um, somebody once called it a smiling depression. That, yeah. Hey, how are you? Hey, I'm great. But actually inside you're going home and just about, making it through the day and a lot of people feel like that oh yeah we we're okay we plus one more smile but deep down we're not or yeah. we have those really intense moments and then you know we're, we're plastering it with alcohol drugs sugar you name it yeah so that that's a whole host of things i think through that but mine got really intense so i knew i was just not in alignment with who i really wanted to be and um, yeah, and then I went down the spiritual path, so hence a lot of the uh, Wayne Dyers, and Marianne Williamson's, and and now I, you know, I've obviously cultivated my own spiritual practice with the universe and God, whatever you call it. Yes. But yeah, so then I've kind of funnily gone from my finance background to all this peak performers to the spiritual elements, and I can really bring all the three together um, because it's changed my life. Right. That's what I want to do for others, really. Now, for people who are yearning to transform themselves, but they don't know how, you know, what's step one, you know, because being able to connect with our inner instincts and being able able to feel out people by their energy is very important because sometimes you don't even have to speak with someone. You could feel the energy that that person is bringing into the room and bringing towards you. And sometimes you could just kind of get a drift of what that person is missing in their life just by the energy that they carry. Now for you, you know, how, step one, how do you, someone that is not happy with themselves and maybe they are faking it, you know, how do they transform themselves? What's the most important thing they do to begin this transformation process? So I think a few things. So first, I think what you've said, just the awareness of there's something missing and I would like to explore it or I want to do something about it, depending on the level of discomfort, is really the first thing. I remember when I first was depressed, a lot of people, and in banking at the time, you didn't show your emotions. You just sucked it up. It was like, yeah, yes. everybody's unhappy. Just suck it up. Right? Yes. You just got on with it. Mm-hmm. So things have changed now. You're allowed to say I'm depressed or I'm happy or I'm anxious, but, you know, um, Back then you couldn't, you just sucked it up. You sucked it up. So I think the awareness of something's missing and it's not about my um, husband or my wife or my kid or not even necessarily about my job. It's something deeper. It's kind of 
just that acknowledgement can be quite emotional and bring a lot to the surface, but you have to go there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people aren't just willing to go there, unfortunately. So if you're yes. willing to go there, that's the biggest step. Yeah. And then I think, you know, a little bit carp DM. The right re- there's so many resources out there. So yeah. um, you know, there's spiritual resources, there's just normal mind body resources. It's all very much linked because when you're at peace and you're aware, the right things just flow into your life. There's you know, there's free podcasts, but I would encourage really as a minimum, start reading or getting into some YouTube or podcasts like this where people share their stories. Um and then, you know, I'm currently doing, I keep saying Marianne Williamson because I'm actually in the middle of doing the course in Miracles. But there's so many free or relatively cheap courses out there. Go to um, groups, just go to like-minded groups or YouTube podcasts. That would be my first step. Just start reading and listening. And then you'll be drawn to the things that are right for you is um, what I would say as a first step. Now, I found that a lot of times people repress emotions. You know, we were in a society that for so long, people were not allowed to show weakness, you know, and and express themselves because that was a sign of weakness, especially for men and even for women, because women were trying to make a statement, you know, and, and women weren't always treated fairly. So women had to show their strengths and not really show their weaknesses. And when we do that, both male and female, I find that People repress emotions. Things happen in their lives, but they don't give it enough of time to heal or heal themselves. So repressed emotions and you keep repressing those emotions. After a while, I think a person can become numb inside and then they have the inability to actually connect with that inner instincts. How do you feel about people talking to others and maybe going to someone who is a coach or somebody who is a therapist and expressing and talking about themselves, like going back into where it all began and then slowly making their way up and then trying to figure out what's repressed. And then once they unrepress it, then they're able to actually connect with their inner instincts. How do you feel about that? So I think if you're someone who's blocked that, it's really, really necessary. I have some male clients and some male friends, but I have some male clients who will just not create that space for themselves to go there. So they will not create the space for themselves to go there. If they do create the space, it's an idea and they don't even know how to go there. They think it's this mysterious thing. It's not, but until you actually give yourself to the space to just talk feelings, you, you think it's this big thing. And then I get clients who come and say, I had one client who came and said, so I'm happy to talk about this, this and this, but no feelings. But I want to talk about, I don't want to talk about feelings. And I <laughs> said, but what if feelings come up? And he said, yeah, I don't want to go there because I think that's opening a can of worms. Right. Said, but you're already walking around with this can of worms. It'll be quite liberating. And in your head, you made it up to be way bigger than it actually is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, and you don't have to like unearth all your emotions in what the first time you sit down. Maybe you'll just unearth one small feeling or two small feelings or 1% of something. It's always bit by bit by bit. It's like you're not going to run. If you're not a runner, you're not going to just run a marathon the next day, right? You're going to maybe walk first and then you're going to maybe run for like five steps. You know, it's it's gradual and you just do what you can handle. So I I think having a therapist, A, you feel supported. Um, Secondly, it just creates a space. And what I find with a lot of people who don't go there, they also don't allow themselves Uh, in spaces of love and kindness and unconditional support they never allow themselves to be held you know you kind of need to be vulnerable but you need to feel safe Mm -hmm. but if they don't know how to be vulnerable or be safe sometimes they don't know how to do this themselves and that's where I think it can be really useful Um, and they're not they're not going to suddenly start being vulnerable with their friends they've never done it 
very scary place for them. So I think sometimes people need the space or to be held and then just like it's okay. Whatever comes up is okay. Or some obviously every therapist or coach or whoever it is will have some techniques um, that will just help them go there if they don't even know how to go there. So what's your technique? How do you help someone transform? Yeah, it's, 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 I have a toolbox as probably most coaches will be because one size doesn't fit all really. Exactly. It's, I think it's hard to kind of, I, I don't have a process. I don't have a system as such. I have a toolkit of many things that I tried and tested. I'm also a natural empath. Um, I think a lot of um, coaches are, especially women, we kind of sense what the other person is feeling. And I think most people do. It's like, you know, when someone says, how are you? And you say you're fine, but your whole body language speaks otherwise. So we all have that ability anyway. You know, it's not the words necessarily. But I have a toolkit and it's really knowing and, and I think 90% of the times, unless someone is really aware what they come to you for to fix and what's really going on, it's quite separate. Right. So when you really find what's actually going on and then just allowing the space to say, well, it's okay that you're feeling that and creating a bit of space for something new to come in is kind of where the magic is, I think. Right. And I always say with anything in life, it's, getting rid of something that doesn't serve and bringing in something better that does serve is kind of where the magic lies because that's where you're choosing that but you need the space to be able to understand what's no longer serving and are you willing to let go of it and then the big thing is bringing in something new so basically what you're saying is you like to you like to go to the gut source. So you, you you really like to, you know, figure out what is actually causing this person to w- want to fake it and not really want to, and, and is afraid to be their true, true self. And then once you figure out what the platform is, and then you try to develop a personalized um, work in therapy to help that person step by step. So they're able to transform. Now, it's, is there anything that you could tell the audience if they if they feel unhappy with themselves? What would be the first thing that they want to do to start? Now, you mentioned go into motivational, you know, listen to motivational speakers and get an ideas from that. But do you have any exercises that or anything at home people could start to do to start to figure out, you know, what they're missing in life and and then start to figure out, you know, um, how to connect with that inner self yeah so like I said first thing is just the awareness or oh, I'm unhappy even acknowledging that you'd be surprised how hard it is for people to acknowledge that yeah but I would say yeah so then obviously there's lots of resources but I, I really think the first step is actually like to feel it in your body and so I always say exercise when I work with clients the first thing I do is to get them moving their body because they will have numbed it with various different things Mm -hmm. also so so anyway you'll have numbed the feelings with whatever your thing is alcohol chocolate drugs whatever right the things are So, so so you will have numbed and what I find often and I've experienced it myself when you go into that kind of unhappiness you're an autopilot and lots of parts of you including your body are in freeze mode Mm -hmm. so everything is in freeze mode and from that place it's actually even impossible for a therapist to unfreeze you yeah you know it's a very different you'll probably know this right it's very difficult to unfreeze you kind of need to really chip but so the unfreezing really comes from moving the body yeah for me more than anything else because when you're in freeze mode everything is so uptight so it's kind of I would say it's three things so so habits is exercise so depending on the level you're at you need to up the exercise if you're on zero walk if you're walking then do some strength training do the gym if you're already doing all of that you need to up level it maybe to twice a day but the best way to unfreeze everything is 
exercise, fresh air, and good food and nutrition. Because suddenly all the numbing starts going, your body starts moving more wherever it's stuck. Mm -hmm. And through the good nutrition, you're giving your body more energy to heal. Or sometimes actually before you heal, more stuff comes up, but it has to come up to heal. But it gets the space for the energy to move and let you know what's going on. So I really think that's that's kind of the first step. Okay. And through all of that, obviously you sleep better. And as you sleep better, you have more willpower to look at things better. And it starts a cycle of, ooh, do you know what? I slept well. I feel good. I can look at whatever comes up today. Right. A cycle, isn't it? Yes. And also you talk about nutrition. Like what type of suggestions do you give your clients when it it comes to nutrition? Like what are suggestions? Um, Do you ask them questions about their eating habits? And then do you make certain suggestions of what foods are actually very good for people that help maybe focus better or feel better in, you know, their overall mentality and, and physical being? Yeah. So, I mean, it, again, depends on the level. So let's say you're a beginner. I would really um, say the three things I think uh, that need to go or really minimalize is carbs and sugar yeah. and caffeine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those three are real numbers. And when you have them, you might get a high, but then you get the crash and your body's constantly just trying to balance you out. You know, know, a sluggish body is a sluggish mind and it just doesn't do your brain any good. It doesn't do your body any good. So if you can just cut the three out or minimize them, Mm -hmm. that in itself is huge. Right. More live foods. So at least I would encourage one spinach juice a day. Mm-hmm. This is my like Bible. Um, two things if I can give you. I wake up and hot water with lemon. It just cleans your system out. But I, I mean, there are lots of different types of great smoothies and juices, but I like something quick. So every single day is a minimum. What I do is I just have spinach, lemon and water. <laughs> big jug of spinach lemon and water blend and have and it's every day at 10 o'clock unless I'm out and about so it's really like a really good habit to have yeah I think if you just start with that that's a really good start um, obviously if you're more advanced then less processed foods um, is good um also there are lots of um i love the medical medium if anybody's heard of the medical medium he talks about healing foods for your body he talks about how to get your gut better for healing and it's things like bananas which are really good mm-hmm. but as an initial step just get rid of the carbs the caffeine and the sugar yeah Some more greens and more live foods i think that's that just takes you a long long way now, how, do you feel, how do you feel about meditation? Because also you want to, you know, try to get a person to, you know, mentally start to, um, you cleanse the body, you're cleansing it through exercise and nutrition. But are there also ways like meditating to kind of dig deeper in yourself to kind of figure out, you know, more about the the hidden sources, like trying to connect again with your um, intuition and connect with your maybe chakras or be able to meditate and figure out what you are missing. Do you, do you like meditation? How do you, what do you suggest? Do you ever say? Yeah, I, I, I've been a big meditator over the years and I, I generally will meditate. Sometimes I do a walking meditation um, otherwise I'll at least, but I'll at least spend half an hour, if not an hour meditating daily. That's, that's completely changed my life. So I think that's really essential to connect to yourself. Um, so that's the third habit, because we talked about the action, we talked about the food, and then the third habit is the thoughts and uh, the mindset. So I think the first thing is just to cut out, like, you know, watching the news. And um, if you're on social media, who are you following? Who are you trolling? Make it some really good quality people because every single thing influences your mind. Yeah. And if you, yeah, it, it really feeds your brain and you don't realize it, but those thoughts are heavy and you carry them the whole day. But I think it's essential, especially when you're starting in the morning and evening, I would say before you go to bed, mm-hmm. I really do not, I, 
I stop people from watching the news before they go to bed. That does not call for a restful healing sleep. Yes. You probably know. Something beautiful before you go to bed. So I have a morning prime and I think in the morning you should meditate or journal. Mm. So I would say if you're a starter again, do a 10 minute guided meditation. That's enough or 10 minutes breath meditation morning and evening just start there lots of apps like headspace and calms and you know for daily meditations but twice a day but keep them short in the beginning and then you'll be able to grow in the depth and the query but use something more active so yeah like a breath meditation or visualization to start Mm -hmm. with get it to practice of sitting still and what you don't realize whilst you're doing all of that, it gets you more embodied in your body. We are meditating, so you know, but I'm just sharing this for those who might never have meditated. It grounds you. And the most beautiful thing is it helps you develop a love and acceptance and a connection with yourself. Yes, it does. Sitting uh-huh. still is where the connection with yourself just happens. It's like a child. If you spend some time with the child, you connect. If you don't, you don't. It's right. you know, it's that kind of thing. And and journaling is a form of meditation. And if you are not able to sit still, then just journal to start with. Right. That's also a, a really good practice, I would say. And I love this quote. Um, they say everybody should um, meditate for at least 15 minutes a day. Yes. Mm-hmm. Unless you're really busy, then you should meditate for an hour. Yes, yes. There's <laughs> always time. I love it, right? Yeah. So, yeah. You know, and it just it... takes the edge of everything, right? What feels oh. really stressful and overwhelming. You do some meditation and you come out and your whole state has just changed. Yes, I feel if you do it in the morning for 15 minutes before you start your day, you feel a lot more focused, a lot more calmer and a lot more relaxed. And you're able to actually feel more energized and be able to accomplish more that day just by those 15 minutes of meditation when you wake up in the morning. And like you said, nutrition is great. Like you said, you know, um, uh, exercise and you know all you need is a minimum of 15 minutes of exercise you know for people who are not physically you know in the best of shape you know 15 minutes will it can go a long way to help your body and just like you said it sounds like you're also saying get rid of the negativity you know it, it seems like you know one big thing is people have a lot of negativeness around them and they don't even realize it and to Marie, think about the social media, what's on TV, what they're watching and who they have around them too, you know, and try to try to get rid of the negative and pull in the positiveness. Is that what you're also trying to say when you're I'm really, I'm really saying that it's really, really important because I think you don't realize a piece of news that you've watched. And, you know, we all know what the news, the news is always feeds on negativity and fear anyway. But right now, since the pandemic, a recession, coming the war in the ukraine you know there's just so many images in your brain and what you don't realize is that one little thing you read or heard you're carrying that with you the whole day you don't yeah you don't realize the subconscious impact so i think it's really important to see like i call it who's getting a pass into your mind yes you wouldn't just let anyone into your home right so why are you just letting anyone into your mind you know, it's so precious. When COVID first came out, I was constantly watching the news, trying to figure out like what was going on and, you know, what about this virus? And the more I watched TV, the more depressed I felt because it was just like the TV could have a big impact. What you watch during a day, you don't realize it or what you listen to on the radio. And also, I think the people we hang around with, be careful of your environment because you might have people around you that actually are pulling you down, don't you think, too? A hundred percent. I mean, this sounds harsh, but I ended up hanging out or I I just lost so many friendships because I was no longer in that vibe of moaning and fear and I was willing to see beyond that. Mm -hmm. So there's some friends I lost. And some friends, because everyone's, you know, not everyone wants to change. And that's fine, obviously, each to their own. Right. But I didn't want to be around that vibe anymore. And what you find is as your vibe raises and you hear good things and you change, you naturally don't want to be around 
those sort of conversations and energy. Yeah. And if you are, you'll come back and you'll feel so heavy. You'll know it's not you, for you. Yeah. You feel so different. You think, God, I used to live like that, right? Right. Oh, definitely. You know, I, I know that for myself, I had friends, great people, but so negative. And they were, after having a conversation with them or being around them, I actually felt drained, you know? Right. Um, and, you know, as much as I liked them and as much of a great person they were, their energy was very negative. And it actually had an impact on the way I felt after I was around there, after I was talking to them. And as much as I liked them, I felt like I had to kind of pull away a little bit. And when I did, I felt better. I felt more energetic, more, more positive because I didn't have those people around me pulling me down. How do you feel about that? Absolutely. And I think it's exact. you know, when you come back and I'll tell you a little clue, some of those friends that I used to hang out with, but when I changed, even before I met them, I started feeling anxious or dreading that. Yeah. Oh my God, I don't know how this is going to go. Or you pray they cancel. I know we've all been there. I know I'm not the only one. You know, if you, you're like, oh, I hope she ends up canceling. There's a clue there that actually this isn't in alignment with what yeah. you are. And sometimes, you know, you have to have the tough conversations and decisions. And it's hard because exactly as you said, you still love them. It's just, you're just different now. Yes. And people so, change, you know, and you have to just understand that, you know, and some people change for the better and some people don't and some people don't change at all. And sometimes you have to kind of surround yourself with the people that are going to pump you up and make you a better person. And that's that positive energy will take you further. And I think it also will help you inter interact with your 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 um, your inner sixth sense and your, your your intuition and help you figure out, like you were saying, your true passions, what you need in life. And, and, you know, your inner self will kind of help you guide what your outer self needs. So you don't have to be that fake it till you make it chick or guy, you know? Exactly. I think a lot of people just complain because they don't really want to look at what's going on with them. And then you don't want to be around that because you are now on a different journey where you're happy to look at what's inside. So yeah. sometimes it's inevitable, but you lose some friends, but you know what? As you say, as you grow, I'm sure, um, I think everyone I know has been on this journey yeah, has yeah. had to let go some friends. Yeah. So we talk about, we talked about, you need good nutrition in your life. I and mean, we talked about the different types you mentioned. You mentioned about the exercise, you mentioned about um, uh, meditation, and you also uh, talked about negativity and positivity and how to look at what's good for you and what's bad for you and to separate the bad from the good and to focus more on the positive things. Now, is there anything else that you think people who are just beginning, who want to make themselves a better person, are there any other suggestions that you think would help them? Is well kind of connect with themselves and kind of you know be able to you know interact with their sixth sense and not have to you know be so clueless about what they need and and how they and and figure out who they are as a person yeah so I think we obviously also talked about the um the meditation and we talked about I, I briefly mentioned looking at either going for seminars or going to there's lots of circles so there's I know they tend to be more female circles because I think women are more open to vulnerable and sharing I hope that programming changes but inevitably that's the way we've come through so far yeah. it's changing but anyway there's a lot of circles that you can join you can join online if you're not comfortable going I would say you know start looking at some people who really inspire you and mm -hmm. look at the way look at what they're saying and how they're saying it but you alluded to this because people who are at higher frequency just five differently yeah. so start looking at their habits um start hanging out with them more on whether it's on podcasts on youtube what they've said and how they're leading their lives and start start trying to do more of that and look at success stories because that will inspire you look at the end of the day nobody wants to follow a part that doesn't have a success it's called the cinderella ending right yeah 
one of the people who've already had their Cinderella endings in some way or the other so that you feel inspired that, yes, if I go down this path, not only will I feel good and obviously a big outcome is peace when you go on this journey. Right. You're not speaking it, you're authentic, you're able to speak, cry freely, everything you need. Yeah. You feel very safe. You feel very supported because you're doing it for yourself. Right. Which maybe you've never learned. But at the end of the day, we all want a success story. So you want to know that these things can lead to success. And so you need to see people who've kind of come up the other end are leading the lives that inspire you, really. Yeah, I, I agree totally. You know, and I've always tried to make an effort to try to focus on people that are above me that have accomplished a couple of things more than me and use them as an example because when people are doing things and they might be doing better than you that's not a bad thing some people get a little bit inferior to that and they you know they don't like when other people might be doing better than them they get a little insecure but it's actually a good thing I think when you focus on people that are a little above you because that you watch how they're doing it and it gives you kind of an inspiration on hey if they could do it I could do it too. And they give you the energy, the motivation, and you see how they do things in life. And it actually could be a guidance, I think, too, you know, is, is don't be so, so insecure, you know, be more confident in yourself and use people who are, are doing a little better th than you as mentors. What do you think about that? 100%. I love everything you've said, because we should be learning from people who are ad ahead of us. So we get, so we grow, we learn different things and we get inspired. We're all going to be growing till the day we die, right? Yes, so, oh, definitely. <laughs> so, there's, so there's no point thinking I know it all or I'm the finished product because none of us are, right? doesn't matter who you are, where in your journey you are. Yes. You could be really successful and you might start a new journey that you know nothing about. My example, I'd outgrown banking. When I started this journey, I was so vulnerable because I was like starting, you know, from zero base. Yeah. So, we're, you know, we're always growing. So, yeah. And, and they always say, right, um, you need to be, with people who are more successful than you because you learn more from them because they've walked the journey they've they've been humbled through the experiences and they've you know it's not that their life is sailing it's that the stumbling blocks you're gonna now face they face them and come yes, out the yeah. other side right, that's right. what it is it's not that they are any better than you mm -hmm. it's just that they've experienced those blocks which and this is the thing about any journey especially if you're going to go down this path but any journey really i always teach clients and it's part of my visual like, when i teach visualization I, I teach about the hard graft and actually brace yourself to go yeah it's gonna get tough and bumpy and I know it is because if you are not prepared for it to get tough and bumpy you're not ready for the tears or whatever else god knows what can get thrown at you yeah then you're really missing a piece of being prepared yeah, it's you like, go yeah ahead. You be prepared no you just gotta be prepared that it will get tough before it gets better that's part of growth oh a hundred percent now do you come across a lot of patients that happen to be maybe suffering from low self-esteem and you know it's it's not so easy for them to you know um kind of move up the ladder because they don't feel that they're worthy enough yeah. So, you know, uh, self-worth, I face self-worth myself. I think the biggest ones, and I face them both myself, so I'm happy to share, is, yeah. Um, yeah, so not feeling good enough is like the number one thing. And from it stems, you know, they call it imposter syndrome. And there's a ton of stuff that comes out of that. I lack confidence. Yeah. So, yeah, not feeling worthy or not feeling good enough is huge on the planet. Um, and the other one that a lot of people face, and I faced myself um, for a long time, is that I didn't feel I was lovable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're not easy things when you first come across them. Yeah. So but actually, you're already living with them, ironically. So, but the acceptance of it is 
once you accept it and then you kind of go through these practices, you realize it's not true. It's just right. in your mind. It's in your mind. You kind of, yeah, we kind of have to face it. And then you have to have the tears or the sadness or whatever decisions you've made out of those two belief systems. And that's what all it is. It's a belief system. And once you realize like I'm spiritual, so this might not resonate with everyone, but we're all creatures of God or we're all part of God, whichever way you look at it. And if that doesn't resonate, it doesn't matter. We are all unique and beautiful and worthy. And if you change your belief system to that, life just changes. Now, is there anything besides what we talked about that can help somebody increase their self-worth or their self-care, you know, and make them feel that they are worthy of change? They are worthy to be better and that they're capable of it. Is there anything, any exercises or any suggestions or anything that they can do to increase their self-worth so they don't have to think that they are not good enough to be a better Yeah. Person? So the first thing I would say is that just know that even the people who are not saying it are probably feeling it. And mm -hmm. there are times you feel it more in your life and less. But even the people who outwardly are not saying it, everybody feels it at different points. But some people have it as a core belief system. And that can be quite limiting, obviously, in how you put yourself out there and how you show up. Then know it's a belief system. And remember, we talked at the start about getting rid of things that don't serve and bringing in something that serves. Yes. So then recognize that this is an identity or a belief system I no longer wish to carry because it's not true. Mm -hmm. And instead, replace it with um, that I am worthy. So the affirmations I love, and I used to say to myself all the time when I started this journey was, I am worthy. It's simple and beautiful and easy um I, and then I used to say all the time I fully love and accept myself I think I borrowed that from Louise Hay mm -hmm. um, if anyone knows her but I love and accept myself was a big one I am worthy pick an affirmation and just keep repeating it yourself every time you go into the I don't know if I can do this I'm not good enough break it with hang on I am worthy hey I've got this hey you know, and it just breaks the belief system. It takes a while, right? You've oh, lived yeah. within your life. It might be in your DNA. It might run in your family. It runs on the planet to an extent anyway. Yeah. But the more you can break it, the more you can go. Or, or sometimes it, it just has to be, even though I feel like this, I'm still going to try whatever I need to try. Right. So that's, that's kind of a really, really big way to kind of change your state and your belief system and that's I think when you recognize it is just a belief system and and the third thing is to say I I will grow so even if I'm not good right now even if I'm not good enough right now I will do what it takes to become good enough and then you put strategies in place you read if you're training to become I'm just making this up if you're training. So I'll, I'll use an example that I use sometimes with them um, in my talks. If people think actors, actresses are naturally talented, some of them are the shyest people outside stage. Yes. If you look at their day, if you look at the graph they've put, say with musicians, by the way, they're waking up at five, six in the mor morning. They're training their bodies hard. They're on a healthy eating regime because sometimes they're shooting for 14, 16 hours a day and they need to be on form, looking their best. Yeah, deep, deep resilience. But all of them, even when they're not on set, are constantly working on their skill sets of whatever kind of actor or actress they're being right. or, or if you're this kind of an actress say you're a comedy actress and the next film you want to go into might be suspense right oh my god you don't say i'm not good at suspense you say right this is a new skill set i need to learn and i'm gonna do what it takes right and you talk about love also. So how does a person feel self-love? How do, if a person doesn't, you know, for the longest time, they maybe didn't feel worthy of themselves. Um, where does the love grow? How does that automatically, how does someone, you know, how, how does someone start to feel that self-love and start to love actually who they are? 
Okay, so I love and accept myself is a big one, but this one always makes um a few people in the room cry because I always say, treat yourself how you would treat your child. So let's say I am your child and I come and say to you, and it, by the way, this is you can use this for self worth as well. If I if I'm your child and I come and say to you, do you know what? I don't think I'm lovable. What would you say to your child? Oh, me? I would tell my child, of course you're lovable. I love you. And, and you know, I would tell them, you know, you can do anything you put your mind to. I said, if you love yourself, you need to care for yourself. And do you care for yourself? I would ask my, my son or daughter and, you know, and, and see what they say. And then I would take it on for there. And then I would bring up all their great qualities and, you know, and I would help them, encourage them. These are the things why you should love yourself because you have so many worthy qualities and you are a good person. And if I could love you, you know, you could love yourself and because I see a beautiful person in front of me, you know, and I would make them believe in, in themselves and, and believe in all the great qualities that they carry. Right. That is exactly your tip. But instead of doing it for your child, you do it for yourself. So you use it by example. Being yeah. example so every time child. you feel that, just think it's uh, it, it's not the whole you feeling that. There's an unloved part of you or there's an inner child in you feeling unworthy or unloved. It's not the whole of you. So if you can become part of you can become the adult and think the part that's feeling unloved or unworthy is that child. How you spoke to your child, you speak to your own inner child in that same loving way. Be to yourself how you would be to your own child. Excellent. I love that. I love that. Right? Yes, I do. It's <laughs> really powerful because you know if you can think of, oh my God, I would never let my child feel unloved, then never let yourself feel unloved. Right, right. Yeah, and it can be quite beautiful when you think of it that way. Now, you you offer a lot of different services. Um, tell us a little about your website. What's your website's name? So it's behind me for those watching, but it's um, Unlimited Transformations. So it's www.unlimitedtransformations.com. Okay. And my name is Mira. My email's on there. So the best way to reach out to me is Mira, M-E-E-R-A, at unlimitedtransformations.com. And what services do you provide to your clients? Like what can they find on your website? Do you have blogs or do you just show what kind of services first? Let's go over that. Yeah. So the main thing I do for clients is I do one-to-one -one coaching. Mm -hmm. um, I sometimes, and they're not on my website, I will update it, but sometimes I run um, workshops. Um, so I, I can run workshops, but the main services are workshops, retreats, and one-to-one -one, um, services. Excellent. Do you have a blog or anything that people could go to on your website? Um, I don't have a blog. The best thing is, and it's on my website, you can connect with me on Instagram. Excellent. And Instagram is Mira Unlimited is the name. Okay. And it's also on my website, but it's Mira Unlimited. So if you connect with me on Instagram, then um, anything I'm doing, I can post up there. But yeah, one-to-one. Uh, -one. And if you just connect with me as I have upcoming workshops, then I'll start posting. I don't do a newsletter anymore. I used to, but I just let people know about workshops because now I'm posting on Instagram the daily thoughts. So yes. I don't really tend to do a newsletter at the minute. Okay, that sounds great. And if you can give a couple of tips to everybody, like before we end, is there anything that you'd like to tell the audience, you know, for people who want, because basically I think a lot of people who are interested in transforming their own lives are going to be listening to this video. So if you have a couple of things that you want to close with that you just want people to, to know, what would you tell them, those couple of tips? So the first thing I would say is it's a very exciting journey. It's, it's one you come out with, 
you you come up you you come up with a few bruises and then you heal mm -hmm. <laughs> and you could almost see those bruises as uh, you know when kids yes. fall down and they see the scar as a, as a prize <laughs> so i would say you know what it will definitely come with bruises but the bruises will heal and what i will say is that is way more fun than not letting the energy move or letting the energy get bruised. Because when the energy is stuck, that's when we go into depression. Yes. The energy yeah. wants to play, let it play. So that would be my first thing. Right. Yeah, whatever it takes, just let the energy play. Uh, we all, and when I say energy, you can, it can be your soul, your spirit, your energy, wh whatever term works for you. Right. But there's a part of you that wants to experience and play. And that's why we're here, to experience and play and grow. Otherwise, why are we here, right? Exactly. Whatever your beliefs, yeah, it doesn't matter. But we are here to experience, grow and play. And yes. when you're not doing that, the energy is stuck. So grow and play inevitably as you're playing. You can imagine your kids. Yes, they fall down, they bruise. But they're back playing the next week. They love it, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. Right? Definitely. It's like they love it when they have the bruises. That's how we need to become. Love the bruises as much as you love the wins is my first tip. My second tip is people think, people who haven't gone there think it's this big, scary journey. It's not. It's right. just a part of you of your development you might not have accessed mm -hmm. but it's a fun part because you get to know you right yes and you're you're probably very interesting and if you're not you can change that exactly a hundred percent yes so if you find things you don't like either learn to love them or change them yeah, yeah you have a choice at that point so it's okay um and and really just have fun yeah Transformation is fun. It's a journey, you know, a journey it's to the fun. unknown. And and it, at the end, you're a better person, right? You you come out with a sense of peace. Yeah. But the peace starts, you know, you'll have tears, you'll have tantrums, you'll have all of that. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you'll have a sense of peace that you never had before. And it's actually really beautiful when you look back. Yes. So I'm sure you'll agree with me because you're smiling. Oh, I think 100%. you relate to that. Yeah, I can relate to that 100%. <laughs> 100%. So it's really worth it, right? Oh, it's most definitely worth it. It's, you know, it, you have to, you have to really deep, deep dig down and you're going to, like you said, get some bruises, but those bruises will go away. And at the end, you will find peace. You'll find peace within yourself, within your life. And I think you'll view life differently and you're, really to, to. you're going to start smelling flowers that you never smelled before. You sure will. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> So tell, tell everybody before we go, just remind them what your website is so they don't forget. Yeah, please reach out. My website is www.unlimitedtransformations.com. Connect with me on Insta. And actually, I always um, offer this. So before I go off any podcast, if anybody has anything for the next five days, they just want clarifications on anything we've talked about or it's triggered a certain question, please email me in the next five days and I will definitely reply. Um, I'm always happy to follow on for a few days after. Mira, it's been a wonderful journey talking with you today. I just love all the information you provided and the information was fabulous. I think a lot of people are going to benefit from all these tips that you have you know, supplied us with about transforming your life. And I just want to thank you so much for coming on the show and taking your time to help others. You've, you have been a magnificent guest. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been an absolute pleasure as well from my end. And I hope, you know, maybe someday you can just come back on and we can talk some more about transformation because it's been a wonderful discussion and I'm very happy to have you on the show. <laughs>